Hi guys, Graham here and welcome to my new series, Traditional Flash. In these videos, I'll be designing flash sheets by hand, mainly using Copic markers. If you aren't familiar with them already, don't worry as I'll be explaining what they are and how to use them as I go. What I have here is a sheet I've lined up with a couple of circus girls. Uh, the one I'll be painting in this video is a strong woman, if there is such a thing. Basically a female equivalent of a strong man. Uh, all I've done so far is lined the sheet and then filled in the solid black areas, so let's get started. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, using four different pens for the black. You've got the black pen and then three uh, gr gradients, or well, three pens to make up a gradient after that. So the next pen is pretty much black, but a tiny bit lighter. Then you've got a lighter one and then the lightest one. So it's not quite white, it's not a colorless blender, it's, uh, it's pretty close though. So what you do is you lay down a bit of black where you want the shade in and then go over it with the next pen and then the next pen and the next pen and I'll do a close up on that a bit later in the video so you can see exactly how that works but for now you can just watch how, um, how I'm doing the shading where I'm putting it for reference if you're doing like traditional work like this. So with the rose I'm only putting a little bit of black in because it's going to be mainly a red rose but I just thought a little bit of black shade and I'll give it a little something extra because I didn't want it to just be a red blob sitting there really. And I'll put um, a little border around the red as well when I do it, which you'll see later on in the video because I'm actually going to colour this. Finally, I'm doing a video with some colour in. If you were subscribed to my old channel, you'd see my old videos, then you'd know that I was uh, pretty bad at putting colour videos up and everyone was asking for them, but never did one, but finally it's here. So. This is how this is what I do. I use uh, I use Copics because they're they're ink based, and they're that means they don't run. Even if you say if you do some black shading with watercolor and then you paint it over it with some red watercolor to color the area, it would uh, run. The black would run the color underneath. But with Copics, they don't do that quite so much. They still do run a tiny bit sometimes, but that kind of works to your advantage because you can you can blend them together easier. But generally with inks, they stay put, which is good in some respects, bad in some others, because you uh, make, if you make a mistake, that's it, it's there, it's not coming off. So you've got to be careful what you're doing with them. It's best to practice with watercolours, really, with a brush, but, yeah, like I say, inks are the way forward. If you have a bit of experience, then they're great. So what I'm doing is I'm just going around the bottom of the, what is it, weight, with a... Uh, with a large area of black just leaving a little highlight at the top. With traditional work you want to put a lot of black in because they didn't have that many colours um, back when this original sort of style came about. Maybe had like four or five colours. So what they would do is they would use the black and the colour of the skin as extra shades. So for example with the rose, like I was saying earlier, they would use a bit of black shade in, fade it into red, and then fade out to the skin colour. They wouldn't actually put another colour at the edge of the rose or anything like that because they wouldn't actually have another colour to put there. So, okay, onto the hair now. This is just going to be black hair, just real simple. I haven't put any lines for it or anything. There's going to be no highlights running through the hair. It's just a highlight around the top. Really simple, really traditional. So I'm blocking in the darker area first. You don't have to worry about the black pen drying before you blend over it. And then I'm going round with the next one that's quick so that's still wet while I go over it with the next one because you don't have to worry about the black dry and blend it into the next pen because the next pen is so close and I'll put the numbers of the because the uh, Copics are uh, coded so I'll put the codes for each pen that I'm using in the description if you're interested in buying the exact same ones and this part um, I'm just showing you that I can't shade at the top of the leaf because there's black leading into it and it would kind of blur into the leaf if you see what I mean so I'm shading at the bottom instead and I'm doing this bit in real time just so you can see how long it takes to actually do a little bit of shading so you've got the black going over it with one stroke of the next pen and then the third pen pretty much one stroke again maybe a couple just to get it dark enough and then this last pen, I kind of uh, scrub a little bit with it uh, just to get it blending out onto the page. And I'll do a close up just to show you exactly what it looks like real close in. So 
I'm shading on the other side or the same side as the top leaf because if I did it on the other side of the leaf obviously that wouldn't work so you've got to always think about where where you're where you're shading if there was another leaf next to this one for example I would you know, I would need to do them in order so that the shading wouldn't clash so if there was two there's, there's three leaves here I wouldn't be able to do the two outer leaves with the shading on the inside they'd all have to be one side so try and bear that in mind so you don't make any mistakes and end up with big areas of black blending into each other so there we have the third pen and the last pen just blended over it and voila you have a nice gradient and it's that easy with these pens they're, they're really good so back to speed painting now um, what was I going to say Oh, with um, if you see if you're painting with normal inks in a brush, you would ha literally have water and a black ink. So you'd paint the black ink in, and then you'd go along the edge with some water on a, with a clean brush to blend the blend it out and get a gradient. But obviously, that's only two colours, so it's a lot harder for beginners or people who aren't that experienced at working with inks and painting in general to get a good gradient. But with these pens, it makes it a million times easier. I mean, to be honest, I don't really. I don't find inks easy to use at all. I haven't really used them that much, but when I have used them, I've found that they they blend a bit weird, and I don't know, maybe I'm using the wrong type of ink. But yeah, I don't really get on with them that well. But then I used these pens, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is great. This is exactly what I need. Um, so on a belt, I'm just doing a bit of uh, black each side, with a highlight down the middle, simple, old school, and just shading in here as well. Um, oh, this is a tip for... Uh, traditional pinups and traditional women in general. If you uh, ha if they have a dress or a skirt on, which I'm assuming they usually would, unless they're wearing like a bikini or something, uh, you would give the impression of their legs and their lady parts uh, underneath the dress. And these are the colours that I use. I will put the colour codes for these in the description as well, as I can't really remember them off the top of my head right now. But that's a colourless blender right there. Uh, that's red and yellow and green and a brown. That's all the colours I use in this flash sheet. Like or I'm doing a set. I've done a few of these and those are the, the only colours I use throughout the whole set. Purely for the fact that it keeps it looking old school. You know, you could put a bit of blue in as well. They had blue. Uh, and so yeah, let's get into the colouring. So this rose, like I say, I'm leaving a border of uh, what well, would be skin colour if you were tatting it around the edge and that gives it like an extra shade and I'm not even going to bother blending it in if you look at a traditional flash a lot of the time um, they don't even they don't even blend it, it's literally just like a, a line and I kind of leave the line quite rough, I don't make it too neat either because if you're painting it with a brush it would probably be a little bit, a little bit rough around the edges I mean if you look at reference of uh, traditional flash sheets, look at I don't know, if you just search Sailor Jerry Flash on, on Google, it'll come up with loads of stuff and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so onto the green, and I'm just shading in the leaves completely. I'm not, leading, I'm not leaving a white border on any of these, I don't think it adds anything to it. But I'm not really, I haven't really planned out the colours, I'm just kind of, you know, doing them as I go. I mean, I was pretty sure the rose was going to be red and her uh, dress is going to be yellow because it's leopard print and. Um, green leaves obviously but I haven't really didn't really think about it too much it's just like all obvious choices of colour I never really plan it out I just kind of see how it is as I go oh on the face, the cheeks, uh, I just put a tiny dot of red on it and then blend it out with a colourless blender and it gives them like a sort of rosy cheek effect rather than being a really strong blob of red stuck there so if you're going to try this do remember to get a colourless blender because they are needed Right, so now I'm putting a bit of brown around um, around the dress, around the edges of the dress where I think there'd be shading. You know, I'm not I'm not thinking about oh, where's the light hitting her? Where should the shading be? Because with traditional work, it's stylized. It's not supposed to look like real life. It's you're supposed to get the style right. That's the whole point of it. So I'm just doing it. Usually they put uh, shading underneath their well uh, along the line of their boobs, not underneath but on top of it to sort of give the impression of them curving and on the arms they would put a little bit down the edges, a little bit of brown just to give a bit of contour on the arms 
and uh, they do some obviously on the legs around the face so under her chin and across her forehead is uh, quite a traditional way of doing it but like I say if you if you're stuck on where to put a bit of shade in or how to color something just search for some uh, traditional flash on Google you'll find loads of the stuff and don't look for because there's a lot of imitations of it and it's just not quite right that you can you can tell by looking at it that it's not quite traditional it's like a, a modern version that someone's done if you actually look for the really traditional stuff then you'll get the style bang on and that's what I'm kind of trying to emulate when I when I paint my sheets because it's just timeless classic it's great right I think that's pretty much all the brown done now Oh, and I do a bit more along the top because there's a bit of that that line there looks a bit funny just being a oh, bare line so forth. A bit of shading along that give it like the impression of maybe some tattered edges. Same again along the bottom. And then I'll be colouring her dress in yellow. And I've done the black leopard print dots obviously all over it. So with the yellow, I've now got to go around them. But because it's an ink, I don't have to worry about them blurring out it like because I'm putting yellow pretty much over it. And I can even go over the black a bit. I don't have to worry about it too much at all without it without it blending out. So that's a you know, major advantage of using inks. It does make your life easier in some respects. And I would say when you're using pens like this, the advantages of using inks far outweigh the advantages of using watercolour. So that's her dress done. And that's the sheet done. So this is what it looks like completed with the other girl painted as well and if you want to see me doing her, uh, painting her then I'll be doing that in my next video so uh, subscribe like if this video helped you comment with any suggestions or anything you want to see and thanks for watching